The immortal John Hancock here, and I'm honored to have my good friend Steve back on the channel. Welcome. Hey, everybody. And so what we've done is we fielded some collector questions, and I thought it'd be fun to kind of answer these uh, in a video. And there's, there's many people that watch my channel that collect video games. And, and so I'm here to answer some collector questions and maybe help you decide uh, or maybe uh, determine kind of what next to collect or my thoughts on this p collector thing in particular. And I know you, Steve, you've been collecting a, a bit and I know that you'll have some opinions about these things too. And I know that you fielded some uh, questions in the Dallas Retro Gaming Group, correct? Yeah. Uh, I got some questions from um, one of my local groups here. Okay. In Dallas. So we're going to try to answer some of those questions and Great. also just have a good time. All right. So I'm going to use first names of people that ask these questions. Right. And so thank you uh, for asking these. And so uh, Greg asks, uh, have, have you folks lost interest in newer games on disc? Uh, ones that rarely contain the full game or requiring a large patch to play. And so the answer to that is yes. <laughs> um, it really has impacted my, especially my Xbox 360 and PS3 collecting. And so I try to get, uh, part, of, part of what I like to pursue of those generations is like the greatest hits is because okay. they typically require the, 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 the least patch to play um, or they have the complete version of a game on disc. And so how about you? Does that impact your collecting if it's not all on the disc? Yeah, it, do, it does impact it because I definitely want everything on it. Um, now, I do understand, like, most games these days have huge patches and yes, you can't really get around that. Yes, so, do. yeah, I, I'm very, very selective now on what I get. Thank goodness for Xbox Game Pass, but that's another another video. But oh, yeah. it, does, it, it impacts it a lot for me. Great. All right. Next question. All right. Here, I got a question about, and uh, this is a really good question. This is okay. from uh, the Dallas uh, Retro Gaming Group okay. in Dallas. Shout out to everybody. How y'all doing? This is uh, from Leo, and he says, what subsets are the most fun to collect? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love this question because I am a subset person just like you. I didn't really know the term subset until I started watching your videos, John, until I met you. So, <laughs> like, it was always something unique, you know? Mm-hmm. I you even okay. I, I admit this. You made me fall in love with the PS uh, Greatest Hits. That ugly green label. I, I actually <laughs> like it. Uh, that's one subset. The the one subset I do really now. I'm, I like to click now is for the PS One long box. I love these. Look at this. I love that long box. Look at that. Nice. It is so okay. One reason why I like it. Look how big this manual is. We ain't getting this no more. Nope. That is, that is awesome. And then you have artwork on here. That is, that is who doesn't love that? Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun going back and collecting subsets. And I've, I've collected countless. Uh, for me, subset collecting, especially when it comes to like Atari 2600. Mm -hmm. And so like there's, there's, there's no way I'll ever have a 2600 set. There's, there's several games out there that are just way too expensive. But individual companies out there um that's fun to collect so like u.s games you know a good example you know crazy boxes but like i love collecting atari 2600 subsets because every company had a different color box a different design and it's it's a lot of fun to go after and, and typically those subsets are small now for some companies some of the games are really expensive but i i enjoy collecting subsets like that like every game made for a company also greatest hits of any collection is a lot of fun uh, i still need to uh, track down some for the wii u but it's been fun and gamecube yeah nintendo selects are very uh, amazing like i just want to say two real quick like these right here are like i don't say holy grails but they are pretty fun to track down because you don't see them often but i, I love the nintendo selects also just I think I like the the way the badging is on most stuff. Like Nintendo did it like an elegant type of badging. I like that. Then on the on the spine, yep. you have that the little coin symbol. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Next question is from Ralph, and this is uh, a question some of you may know already. But talking about leaving stickers on, on or off. And so for me, I'll go first. Okay. Um, so if it is an original sticker 
from the original retail that it was sold at, Sears, J.C. Penney's, Toys R Us, KB Toys. But even now, like, I'm glad I kept some of my game crazy and some of my other, you know, used game store stickers on. Here's one from KB Toys. I know I just showed this game, but yeah. it's KB Toys. It's in the corner there. Um, it's in the corner there. And, it, you know, original price, twenty three ninety nine. you know, slashed down to seven ninety nine. All those stores are gone. And so the question is, you know, yes, a game looks better sometimes with the stickers off of it, mm -hmm. but you're taking away like the historical aspect of it too. I think it's, it represents, this represents a time in which games were being slashed in price because they weren't selling. And um, I, I think it's important to keep that sticker on this game in this game box. Okay. My opinion on it, um, when we was talking earlier, stuff like this, I'll give you an example. Well, I'm going to give you like three examples. This one right here, uh, I just got a game today uh, from a movie trading, or not movie trading, but from a movie store called Family Video. And this is pretty cool. It doesn't make it look any any sexier or nothing like this. It's actually kind of tacky because of all this on here. But this is my second copy of the game. So I just want to keep that just for historical reasons. Mm -hmm. Another thing is when I go out to buy games like at the thrift store, or a pawn shop or any other store and they have like you'll see like different yeah. stickers on them like right here you'll see one that says 4.99 yeah. and you hear say 1.99 i take that off yeah. instantly yeah those are what i consider secondary yep i hate those i hate yeah. those stickers. yeah secondary market stickers like at a pawn store or a, a game expo or something that's not official where it was originally released and had on there yeah i'd take those off <laughs> That's good, yeah. Get rid of those stickers. You don't need them on here. All right. My next question comes from Kristen. And it's, how do you decide what system to collect for and which was your most challenging system to collect for? Woo-hoo-hoo. <sighs> the Sega Saturn. I love collecting for the Sega Saturn. Um, I don't have it anymore because now I'm switching over to uh, other means to play those, but that was super fun to collect. I remember going out every day. Um, if you go to my channel, you can see my full collection of Sega Saturn set on my channel. Uh, I'm happy I had it, catalog it, let it for the, you know be on there forever as long as YouTube stays up. But man, it's so difficult. And even now, oh, I I pray with you guys. Whoever's collecting Sega Saturn, I know the struggle. It is hard. It is hard and it is frustrating sometimes, but keep going. You can make it, but it's, <laughs> it's fun, but it's not fun. Yeah. That's a tough one for me. I've collected so many things over the years. You know, I've been collecting 30 years and challenging. Neo Geo. No. <laughs> well, I never went for a full set of that, but I would say Super Nintendo is pretty tough. Okay. Uh, lots of those games now are really expensive. Um, my Sega Genesis collection took over 13 years. Oh my and God. so that was fun to do though, but I had to be really patient and know well, well over a decade of collecting that and just little at a time. Mm -hmm. And I'd come across, I got most of it in person and it was a lot of fun to collect. So Sega Genesis, what for me was challenging, but also enjoyable. So, but yeah. Super Nintendo was tougher and more expensive, mm -hmm. but Sega Genesis took a lot longer. Mm. Okay. You're All right. <laughs> next one jose asked about special editions Ooh, nice. and so do you care about special editions or not and here's my short answer so i think a lot of limited editions and special editions now of games are kind of like comic books of the 90s okay. if it says limited edition or special edition that doesn't mean it's like to me it's like it has to advertise itself to be collectible and so Sometimes, a lot of the times I don't care. Like okay. for me, I mean, there's certain games I want to get the special edition or something, but for the most part, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, I mean sometimes if it's like a company that I want to, because a lot of those special editions and limited editions are just ways to support a, a company at launch to get like a cool collectible. Um, I don't have any shelf space. I think there are some cool collectibles out there of limited editions. I think a lot of them aren't great. I think some are great, but a lot of them aren't. Mm -hmm. um, all depends on price too, but typically I don't. I mean, I have I have some of my collection, everything uh, going back to, 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 I think, 
Halo 3, um, uh, Halo Reach. I got some of those uh, collectibles, that, you know, those. Halo 4 comes to mind. I really like those games. And so I wanted to get the collector's edition, but I don't feel the necessary need to get it for everything. And so, so. With me, I don't never have a short answer. No. <laughs> I love them. I love the special editions. I guess I miss special and collector's edition together because sometimes a special edition will come with something like a nice little bonus mm -hmm. and the collector's edition will have the special edition in it. So mm -hmm. I love getting them trinkets. I love getting statues, a uh, little piece of artwork and paper, uh, a soundtrack. I love all that, you know, extra characters on day one that goes back to one of our first questions. I mean, I love all that stuff. I think it's so nice and so amazing. I even get uh, excited like when a Switch game has a manual and it says a limited edition and it, is, and it has a manual. I'm like, you know how exciting that is because you don't get manuals anymore in a PS4 game or something like that? I love all that stuff. I, so, I get excited for some. I think it's abused, though. And so they, I think there's a lot of times there's a lot of just stuff that's special edition and it's not worth it. No. I, yeah. think, of like, I think of Fallout 76 or whatever that, that fiasco with uh, – yeah. With the fallout, um, you know, and that that became an issue, or or you know, a game over promises with what's coming in a special edition and can't deliver that. Now we go to the next question. Uh, this is directed towards you. This is from Justin. Okay. And Justin would like to know. I said, are there any systems he finds more frustrating than rewarding to collect for? Hmm. Well, I mean, I try to really appreciate and love all game consoles of all the time periods. Cause I think each one represents something contributed to history. Um, I think the ones most frustrating are the ones that break. So um, there's just con all your consoles are going to break and die. Like that's just going to happen. And we're finding that out more and more as time goes on. So a lot of consoles require maintenance. And so um I have like a love and hate relationship with Amiga because uh, that's a good example of a computer and Atari ST. I'll put that in the same category that you can't just collect these things and kind of let them sit and not repair them. Like the capacitors go out belts. There's a lot of maintenance that goes on with these systems over time uh, with disc drive systems, the, the lenses. Um, so that, is an extra level of maintenance that you have to pay for when you collect for a, a, a computer, especially vintage computing. Vintage computing, I guess, in general, requires a lot of maintenance and it's frustrating. The discs themselves, they, they, they don't read sometimes. They just, they're not real durable. It's just a, it's just a weird time. And I, I love collecting for it, but at the same time, I like things to work. And so when I'm testing this stuff and it just doesn't work, it's frustrating. So especially when it's expensive, like, mm -hmm. you know, finding that hardware is, is, is as much as going out and buying, you know, a PS4 or an Xbox one X. And so um, it, it's, 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 it's expensive. i tell you one of mine that I really hate and I never, I really never want to buy it again was the uh, Atari Jaguar. Oh, <laughs> uh, it hurt my head, man. Like, I got, I got one. Then I got a whole bunch of broken ones. I got, like, I actually got like two Jaguars and two Jaguar CDs. Only one worked, and it was a Jaguar, and it worked for thirty minutes and burnt out. And I was like, mm. forget it. I'm not playing with this no more. And when it burnt out, it burnt out. You could smell it. I'm like, what is going on? Were you using original power uh, AC yeah. adapter with it? I was. I was using original power. It came with it, I, and it burnt out and messed up. And it, some, someone fixed it, and it worked for like two hours and burnt out again. There's some places online that you can send it to be professionally repaired. I can see how that could be really frustrating because Jaguars, Atari Jaguars now are hundreds of dollars. It's crazy. Yeah. They didn't jump up sky high. So here's one for Jesse. And he says, what are the most copies of one game does he own on multiple platforms? He said, I know Rayman 2 was ported to multiple systems across mm -hmm. multiple generations. He said it was everywhere. I, I'm going I'm to cheat here. Okay. <laughs> Pac-Man. <laughs> I have Pac-Man on like 
20 different systems or Tetris, but yeah. Pac, probably Pac-Man. So Pac-Man was made on everything. And I have multiple copies of it because, you know, they made Pac-Man and I have to have that Pac-Man game for, for a set. And I'm okay with that. But the thing, the, thing, the thing that's a little different back in the day about games being on multiple platforms, it's not like now where if Pac-Man's on Xbox One and a PS4, it's like the same game. But mm. back in the day, they looked different. You know, the Intellivision version of Pac-Man looks different than the Atari 2600 version of Pac-Man, which is different than the Atari 8-bit version of Pac-Man, which is different than the Nintendo Entertainment System version of Pac-Man versus the Game Boy. They all had little different variations to them. They sounded a little bit different. They played a little bit different. It was all the same game. Uh But now it's, like, kind of boring when you have, like, two copies of the game, and it's going to look and play nearly the same. It's not not the same as like thirty years ago, where it was like a lot a lot different. Okay. I guess I'm going to cheat, but it's 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 a brand. Okay. It's, uh, uh, WWE or WWF back in the day. Uh, awesome. I get I get every. I'm going for a personal. I want every wrestling game on every I guess system. I'm starting with US, then I probably will move to Japanese. But okay. right now I'm I want it complete inbox okay. everything. Right. And I'm gonna take my time because I mean I found I got a, a lot of them because a lot of people don't get them. I even have one on Engage, you know. That's oh, there you go. Uh, so yes, I say WWE games um, cool. on platforms. Hey, that's an awesome answer. Well, Steve, it's a pleasure having you on. This was a great to have this collecting talk with you. Where can people find you? Uh, people, you can find me. Uh, just go to RightWayPhotography.com. It will hit a link. You can get all my stuff there. Or if you want to go quickly. Uh, just look up Mr. Rightway on YouTube, on YouTube and on Instagram. Just I, I'm always, I'm really mostly on Instagram and it's a uh, Rightway photo. So right. just find it and I'll be there and I definitely love talk games and everything you want to talk about. Well, it was a pleasure having this talk with you and make sure folks, if you like what you see, hit that like button and subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of upcoming videos as I upload every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Thank you for watching us. This is the immortal John Hancock. You take care.